get from them mm -hmm. or seem auto-generated and mm -hmm. they say contact your grant manager. So. Yeah, it's like through the database yeah. you yeah. submitted in or something. <coughs> Maybe I hit that when I tripped. Yeah. Okay. Now it's <laughs> Sorry. Do you want me to hit record, Lisa? Or? I did. It's on, it's on already. We're good. Mm -hmm. What are you guys submitting for Kiwanis? To, to RCO? We're, we're finishing the project. The oh, so you're just submitting yeah, like final, final stuff. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I thought maybe you meant like a, you were like no, in the process of that. No, no, well, they, I don't think they've called, put a call out yet, but they will be yes. soon. Yes, yes, I think yeah. it'll, it'll be lines in the this time. Okay, okay. yeah. Yeah, we'll look to the bond. And I checked my email again, and I do not have a response from Leif yet. Yeah, I only have a response cool. either. That came up a lot right. in the survey. Splash pad. We'll call this meeting to order. We will call Leif and Tim. Tim come late. But we have a quorum, so we're going to move forward. Uh, you have the agenda in front of you. I have a motion to approve the agenda for today's meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Approve the minutes for the uh, December 29th, 2017 meeting. Are you motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Group. Michael and Jim. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, really, the subject me other for this meeting is uh, dealing with the survey and then starting to finesse the goals and policies. We got through a lot of the other items the last meeting, so that way we could dedicate all the time this meeting uh, to the subject matter. So, with that, I will turn it over to Jim. Okay. Morning, everybody. Um, before we jump right into the survey, I wanted to just take um, like five, ten minutes to talk a little bit about the park plan itself because um, as I was preparing for this meeting, I realized we're about halfway through the process and I, at this point in the project, I like to kind of step back and look at, okay, where are we in the grand scheme of things and, you know, looking at what is the deliverable come June, where, where are we in that? process. So um, I put together, this is just like a little discussion guide, mostly to kind of keep me on track with what I want to cover today, but I thought I'd pass it out to you so you guys can walk through it with me. But I wanted to just talk a little bit about why we're doing a parks plan and why it's required and what's, what's required to be in it so that you can understand each time I come down what we're working on, how that, you know, rolls into the, the final document itself. Um, so as you guys know, the, the city is also in the process of doing the, um, the comp plan update. And as part of that comprehensive plan update that's required every eight years, one of the required elements within that is a um, parks and recreation plan. So even though the city back in 2014 um, put together a parks and recreation plan, because the comprehensive plan is, you know, re is due this June, and it's a required element. This was really an opportunity to do a really thorough and robust job and update that parks plan so that it's that it's submitted at the same time as the comprehensive plan so that at the next update and renewal cycle, everything can happen at the same time. 
So what's the frequency for RCOs updates? Required? It's six it's years, yeah. which is really weird. So That's so the the Growth yeah. Management Act, you know, requires the comprehensive plan with the required parks element every eight years for um, for for cities and counties that are fully planning. Um, and then the Recreation and Conservation Office has its own set of requirements with its own deadlines associated with that, and they're not. Um, <laughs> they don't match the, the GMA, so which is pretty odd because our CO based its manuals off of the Growth Management Act. But um, so once you've submitted a parks plan to the Recreation and Conservation Office and it's been approved, you can submit project proposals based on that parks plan for six years. Um, so you know because your parks plan from 2014 was approved. We don't have to wait to submit project proposals until this parks plan is approved because you already have the, the other one that's good for six years. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the, the way the deadlines work. Um, so once this one is approved, you'll have six years with RCO and, and eight years before it's required to be updated for the GMA. So I know that, that seems odd. Um, so really the, the Growth Management Act doesn't have a lot of requirements for what, what needs to show up in a park and recreation plan other than it needs to show demand, what the demand is, um, looking at a 10 year period. It needs to have an evaluation of facilities and service needs, and you need to look at recreation and um, park demand. So it's pretty, it's pretty broad. But um, what I'm using to develop this parks plan is really looking at the Recreation Conservation Office requirements because ultimately um, that's how this plan is going to be beneficial is that you can use it to submit grant proposals um, to, to funding sources. So I want to talk just really quickly about the six things that RCO is looking for so that, um, that you guys know what it is we're working on as a committee to get into this plan to make sure it's successful with RCO. So um, the first thing that RCO is looking for um, are goals. Part of the reason I'm going through this too is as we review the survey results in a minute, what I want us all to be thinking about as we're going through it is what we can extract from it that'll inform these six requirements. Um, Okay, so the second thing is an inventory. And this, this also includes conditions. So um, when I first came down and met with Mike and John, I toured all of the, the city parks and facilities and took a pretty extensive inventory with pictures and conditions and that kind of thing. So um, as far as I'm concerned, like in my mind, that part's pretty much done. Um, what I'd like to do on my trip down today is I'm going to visit um, the schools and some of the churches and I want to get a sense because this community is using so much of the other public facilities for the recreational needs I want to get a sense of what else is available in the community beyond just the city parks um, so that part of the inventory isn't quite done but I'm going to work on that today okay. third thing is public input so RCO is a stickler about this one. Um, the fact that we did this online survey and we got 93 responses with a population of around 9,000. We're just at about that 10% mark, which is what you'd like to see for feeling somewhat confident in your results that it's statistically sound. Um, so in that sense, I think we've, you we're said on the 10, right track. You said 10%? Mm-hmm. So I would think that's about 1%. I not getting it right? Oh, 93 of 9,000. Yes, you're right. Um, yeah, we had, we had a total of 93 responses of our survey, which is which is what we were shooting for. We were shooting for 100, so I'm sorry if I didn't <coughs> say that wrong. Um, where am I at? So the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of public involvement, so we've got the survey, we obviously are involving a citizen-based committee here. Um, those are two things the RCO looks for. And then the, the city is um, throwing an, an open house on February 15th that's related to the comprehensive plan update. And as part of that open house, we're advertising that it's also a chance for the 
the community to come in and review um, the, the park and recreation information. So we're going to have some question boards and some maps available for people to come in and give input on that. So please spread the word. I brought a copy, just a black and white of the, didn't mean this, the one that's printed kind of funny, but um, just a copy of the, the flyer for the open house in case you guys haven't heard so you can mark your calendars. But it'll be a chance to, were you going to say something? No. Okay, I didn't know if an announcement had already gone out. I no, it hasn't yet. It's going to go out today. Okay, yeah. okay, great. So um, it'll be, is it the Sonberg Center? Sunbridge. Sunbridge, okay. Um, I'm working it, in another community that has Sonbridge. <laughs> yeah, it'll be uh, bilingual. We'll have a translator there. Um, and we're going to have the goals and policies trans, uh, translated in Spanish. Um, so we're hoping for a really good turnout. Okay, so between the survey and the open house, and then I foresee that before the, the plan is finalized in June, that we'll probably have one more um, public house or open house type of opportunity for the public to come and look at a more, you know, close to a final draft of, of the plan, and there will be another opportunity to give input. Um, but also, you know, we're utilizing the website and the newsletter and all of those things to keep the community informed of what we're doing. So in terms of public input, I'm, in my mind, I'm putting a check mark there. I think we've, we're on target with that. The fourth thing they look for is demand and need. So, um, So there we're looking at levels of participation, capacity with our current inventory, distance between residential areas and existing opportunities, public satisfaction, maintenance issues, and access. So I think our survey results, to some extent, are going to touch on this demand and need. Um, also just looking at our inventory, what we have, and you remember last time I was down here, we talked about the level of service standards and we looked at where the parks are located and how far they are from residential areas. All of that is going to inform the demand and need analysis. Um, but I, in my mind, we're still working on this a little bit. Mr. Bissell gave a phone number. So we're going to... Okay. Okay. A nine and a one. Just not nine one one. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. It's John with the city. If you'd like to call in to the park board meeting, the number is 509-394-8660. 509-394-8660. Okay. Okay. We try. Yeah. Okay. So um, back to RCO's requirements. The fifth thing is capital improvements. Um, so they're looking for a list of like land acquisition, development, renovation, restoration projects, um, <coughs> projects ranked in order of priority, number of years that it would anticipate to be implemented, and any financing of the projects, where that might come from, what it might cost, that kind of thing. 
So um, this is another thing that in my mind we're still, we're still discussing. I know this came up at the last meeting when we looked at the level of service map. It seemed like what I was hearing from everybody was there's need for another park, uh, particularly in the, the west part of the community. So this is something as we move forward through June that we're going to be fleshing out a little bit more. And then finally, of course, our CO wants to know that the plan was approved and adopted. So um, for the most part, today what I'd like to do is go through that the survey. While we're looking at the analysis, I want us to be think I want it to be just a really open discussion. Um, so as we're going through it, if you have a light bulb go off about a goal, a policy, a potential project, please you know share them with me and I'm gonna be jotting stuff down. But um, so I think we still need to focus on this, and if we get to it today, I know we only have an hour, I want to go through the survey, but on the other easel here, we have the draft um, goals and policies that we can start to go through. So this is just a sense of where we're headed, what's required, um, where we're at in the process, and just along those lines, um, Mike, I thought you'd be happy yeah. about this. I brought a copy of the Colfax Parks Plan. This is kind of the template, the model that I'm working from because I know you were really happy with this product and it was done really well. So I'm just going to pass this around. You guys can just look through it so you kind of have a visual of where we're headed. And I'd like, so just in terms of next steps, really quick while we're on the topic of timeline, we've got, you know, we're about halfway through the process. I'd like um, in the next month to complete some of this goals and policies. And then I'd like to be bringing down a draft of the plan so we can start really looking at what we've captured and see what we need to complete. So um, do you guys have any questions or comments about any of these requirements or where we're at or where we're headed or anything like that? But it helps, especially to see who the man and things like that as we look at this we can start. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm, I'm glad that this was kind of a helpful tool then. Um, because the survey really is, you know, I want us to know what to do with it. We're about to look at these results, and I think we got some pretty good feedback. There were a lot of, I tried to provide on every question the opportunity for an open-ended response, and a lot of people took the time to share their, their thoughts with us. So I think there's um, some common themes, so a few things that I heard over and over again in the survey, and to me those are what stand out as potential projects or goals and policies. So. Um, any other comments on this stuff? Or are you guys ready to dive into the survey? Okay. So Mike is going to have it up on the board, but I think you guys have a printout as well, is that right? Yes. Okay. So I think from the time, oh good, so you've got the new one up here. In their packets though, it might be the... Nope, it's the new one. It is mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay, so we had, um, can I put this up here? Yeah, yeah, you want to put it underneath? Oh. Or? That's a good idea. Okay. You guys can read my handwriting. Mm -hmm. right. um, okay. So, you guys can follow along or look up at the screen. Um, I'm just going to go through question by question. Let's just have this be kind of an open discussion. If you, if you think of something you want to share, please let me know. Um, okay, so 93 responses. We were shooting for around 100, so I'm feeling pretty good with that. Especially after the last meeting, we got we got quite a few. Even in the last couple of days, we got several more. And so I left it open. Um, it's still open. It's still open. Um, I mean, that's something we can discuss at some point. It's if we want to close it. But I, I guess I didn't really feel the need. Um, <clears throat> so first question is pretty, you know, pretty simple. How many people responded? Where do they live? Um, we have 80, about 84% of the people who responded, 78 out of the 93, live in the city of College Place. We have 10 folks that were from Walla Walla County, five from the city of uh, Walla Walla. So most of the responses are coming right from College Place residents. Question two, which category includes your age? About 49, almost 50% were between the ages of 30 and 49. So that gives you a sense of who's responding. The next um, category was um, 65 and older. And right behind that was 50 to 65 years of age. So it didn't capture a lot of the 18 to 29 year olds. 
So, which is kind of yeah, not surprising. Not surprising, but it was an online survey. I thought you know this was this is the way to reach those young people, right? Okay. Um, question three: How do you receive your information about College Place Park facilities? Um, this is just helpful to the city in general, but I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Facebook number one. Um, yeah. Behind that was the city newsletter. So you guys can feel good about putting that out. People are reading it. Sometimes it feels like it's not worth the time, but yeah, but yeah, this <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, the third one was that next door app. So that is a, a useful tool. And then um, and fourth was the, the city website with 33 out of 93 folks using that as their source for information about College Place. <coughs> Question four, how often do you visit College Place parks and facilities? So this goes park by park, starting with Lions Park. Um, the highest percentage was almost 28%, and they, 20, well, basically 26 out of the 93 people said that they visit Lions Park less than five times a year. Um, the, the next biggest response was five to ten times per year. So I got the sense that, folk, I mean, at least out of the 93 people, they're not visiting Lions Park a, a whole lot. So what does that tell us? Does Lions Park not have what they, what they want? Is Lions Park too far from their home? Um, you know, we, we don't get to know why they're not going. Where do old people live in that area? Yeah, yeah. But I thought, I thought that was I interesting because <laughs> from being an outsider coming here, I think Lions Park is a really beautiful park. I, mean, I, I would be going there. So I, I, I thought that was interesting. Um, Kiwanis Park, 27 out of the 91 people have never been there. They're, or they never go there. Isn't that surprising? I thought that was surprising. But I mean, the updates are very new, so yeah. maybe it's it's too soon to be to be drawing people. I don't know what Kiwanis Park looked like prior to the to the pickleball court and all of that. Um, Thirty out of the out of the respondents go there less than five times a year. Um, and then I know we talked about this last time: Harvest Meadows Park and Veterans Park. Pretty much everybody commented they didn't know where it was or they'd never heard of it. So they're not visiting those parks very often either. But what that tells me is out of the four parks, most people aren't going to them. You know, there's, there's not a big response of, okay, well, nobody's really going to Lions, but they're all going to Kiwanis. I mean, most of the responses are in the very low categories. So where are people going? And, and, and why aren't they going here? Um, as we read through the survey, you'll see what I read was a lot of people are going to Walla Walla. They love Walla Walla's parks. So what is it that Walla Walla has that College Place doesn't have is what came to mind for me as I was reading this. And then even the non-motorized trails, 29 out of um, the respondents never use the non-motorized trails. So. I'm not seeing a lot of recreating happening. <laughs> um, anyway, so I just thought that was interesting. I, there's, um, if you can scroll down just a little bit more, Mike, you guys can see too, out of all the comments, I highlighted just a few that I thought were, were interesting feedback. Um, one person commented, we frequent Lions Park and Kiwanis Park during the fall soccer season because of soccer practice. They've never heard of Harvest Meadows or Veterans. We will frequently use the Whitman Drive bike path as soon as they expand it. So soccer is something that's driving people to the park. That was something I, I pulled out of that, so I'm just gonna write that down. Um, someone else commented that they live within walking distance of Lions Park, so convenience makes a difference. So I thought that was an interesting thing to make note of, because that is right in line with the city's goals of having a park within a 10 minute walk or within a quarter mile radi radius of a neighborhood. Um, something else I saw a lot and um, particularly related to this one, someone said we need wintertime bathroom options for runners and kids. Um, this came up a lot in other questions that in the winter, where do people go? You know, if it's too yucky outside, where do people go to recreate? Um, 
I don't know if you guys see any other comments on there that you want to that you want to talk about, but those were the three that I that I highlighted. And you know, we have kind of a goal or policy discussion around what to do with Harvest Meadows in Veterans Park, because technically, on paper, you have four parks, but two of them really aren't being used. They're not known. Somebody commented on here that they went to the city website and didn't even see them listed. So. Does the city want to promote those parks? I know with Veterans Park, there's talk about you know, just trying to acquire different parkland and, and not even pursue that as a park. Um, yeah, 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 I mean, honestly, Har Harvest Meadows Park, I think we should probably keep as a park because that does serve that neighborhood over on the other side of the 125. I don't think it'd be rational to expect folks over there across 125 to go find something else, but uh, Veterans Park, at least in my opinion, uh, that's not a park, nor should it be uh, when the police department expands or something. I see that as ideal uh, property to expand into, so. So, well, one, one reason not to get rid of that, yeah. just a, as a thought, if you run a funding issue mm -hmm. to expand the police department yeah. footprint, then you can include in that issue the replacement of the land that's parkland sure. for somewhere else. Um, so just a just a strategic yeah. thought, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. So these are two things I think that are um, potential policy goal project options for the parks plan. So what to do with these two parks? Um, yeah, you know, I just recommend you begin with put them on the website. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Start publicizing, and then, then when the council decides if they want to keep it or not, deal with it that one. I mean, Harvest Meadows is just a small neighborhood park, so it's not like, you know, yeah. it necessarily has an expectation around it that everybody in the city is going to know about it and visit it, but it's, it seems like it's kind of being under-promoted or under, underutilized. I, I could see the Veterans Park expansion by acquiring the homes along Birch and, um, and Sixth as our campus needs to expand. As we grow, if there's a like you, like an expansion for the police department or something, you, maybe you could incorporate a park purchase along with other grounds to expand for the police department. Just a thought. Okay. Any other comments or thoughts about this question and, and use of the of the parks? I mean, the only other idea I have with with Veterans Park, and it's been thrown around enough between folks where so I can say it publicly, is the uh, south portion of that Toretta property, which is uh, west of College Avenue, uh, because uh, that traded hands, and the folks who now own it, they're open to the concept of basically using one half of it and then potentially selling the other half of the discount to the city, so. Okay, so that could be a potential Yeah, a re replacement or? for Veterans mm -hmm. Park, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, going on to question five. How do you rate the quality and conditions of College Place parks and facilities? Lions Park, 47% said good. Kiwanis Park, um, 26 or you know 29%, 26 people said they don't use that park, um, but 26% said it was excellent. So of the folks who were using it, um, they seem really satisfied with the condition of Kiwanis. And then again, as we talked about Meadows and veterans, not a lot of you know useful feedback there because most people don't use them. Um, non-motorized trails, for the most part, it, it got a good rating. 
Um, so I know Lions Park, the feedback I saw a lot in the notes is the condition of the pond, the condition of the sidewalks around the pond. Um, for example, the first comment, Lions Park, side, side, uh, excuse me, sidewalks and the pond are unsafe, bathrooms and community building are run down, pond is full of sediment, creek should be naturalized, Whitman Drive multi-use path has missing gaps that need to be completed. So is that Whitman Drive multi-use path, in terms of the gaps, is that something that's part of one of the, the goals? Or, or is that something that you're, is related to the um, new Mountain Regional Trail Plan? I mean, connect those gaps? It, it's lightly in the Blue Mountain Trail Plan. That really has to be a discussion with council because for whatever reason, when they put in the Whitman Drive path, it sounded like at the time there was a collection of like five or six homeowners that just were vehemently opposed to the path going across their property and as a bicyclist it's irritating because you actually have a pretty solid path the rest of the way through college place but then between academy and then davis it just like abruptly ends and then you have to go out in the street but then folks live in their park in the street so then you're out in the middle of the street which is so, narrow yeah i i would think it would be a, a good candidate for a goal and for a goal. yeah Um, bathroom facilities at Lions Park are less than appealing. So I didn't know if that had potential for maybe being a project. Is that something you guys have talked about? I know you're, you're talking about the pond and the sidewalks, but an update to the bathroom facilities? That hasn't come up um, other than in discussions we've had about an idea of that being a location for a library where then you would have facilities and yeah, there was a light discussion, and if the residents uh, via vote decided that they truly did want a library, they given the condition of that uh, Lions Club building, because the city actually owns it, uh, that that would be an ideal place to do like a library slash community center in the park, because it's right geographically in the middle of town. We still would probably want restrooms that are yeah. more park facilities so maybe that yeah. you know, could be part of uh, a grant application because they're not ada I'm, no they're right? Not. right no okay. i'll just reiterate a, a real issue that i have um, professionally and that is the safety out of that playground is absolutely horrible it is a liability going to be taken by the, the city because of concrete footings exposed um, and they're higher than what they could should be if you can put the softball there they're still too high they're still going to be above the chip level so between that and then just the overall condition and maintenance of the facility it needs to be upgraded significantly you're looking at a pretty substantial request RCO. Yep. <laughs> but the liability side is the one that worries me yeah. most for the city um, because this is the actual playground equipment that you're talking about. Swing sets, play okay. equipment. Uh -huh. um, um, they're all at probably close to the end of their lifetime. Um, still usable but in order to do that um, you have to get a whole lot of cement out of that because it's too high. They installed it down to start with, in essence. So you have that liability. Yeah. Right. It was probably installed in the days when concrete was cheap. <laughs> Just, that's the way it works sometimes. Dig a big, big hole and throw as much concrete as you can. That works. Okay. Um, what else did I see? Um, I highlighted this comment. Cars drive super fast on Whitman Drive. It's hard to walk or bike. The speed limit on that road should be lowered to no higher than 30 miles per hour. Does, what is the speed limit on Whitman Drive? 
I want to say through through I most of I want to say through minutes. most of it's twenty five because I write that all the time. It's twenty five and thirty, and then once you get to the airport, I think it's forty five. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, once you, once there. right when exactly. you get out, of town, people do speed through there. there. We we yeah, we. Yeah, like a year ago, I think we we put down some traffic counters to because we were getting complaints about speed and out by the airport and the homestead development, I mean, we track people at like 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Oh my gosh. So by the time they slow down, when they get through, you know, past Academy, they probably feel like they're going slow, but they're probably traveling at 40 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I read the county lost one of those digital speed indicators. Yeah. They had out there. Someone decided to Someone throw it. Okay. Yep. Through the... Oh, really? <laughs> yep. The internal workings. Oh. Wow. Four thousand dollars. Wow. They need to install the next one with the camera. Yeah. I'm kidding. Um, the other comment was I saw this a fair amount too was um, a request for sidewalks or bike lanes. Um, so this whole concept we're going to talk later when we get into the goals and policies about some of the. Um, bicycle policies in the you already have, but be keeping that in mind, the idea of bike lanes. Connectivity. Yeah. Okay, so question six. Which of the following should the City of College Place prioritize for their parks? And it's a really long list of um, amenities and types of facilities. Um, the number one thing, by, by a long stretch, um, at 61%, nothing else was even above 35, was restrooms. That's, that's what people want. So, um, that was number one. The second thing was, um, you know, we posed the question of um, improving existing facilities yeah. over, you know, new. And, and the second thing was, yes, people, people seem to agree that the concept is logical to improve what you have first. So improve existing facilities. The third um, highest ranking category was develop more active recreation, things like soccer, hiking, biking opportunities. So again, that need for um, recreation facilities. I saw this a lot in the comments that um, people to join a league or to, to be active you know, with their kiddos and some type of recreation practice, they're going to Walla Walla. Um, and someone complained that that's a really long drive and, that made me giggle a little bit because it's, it's all relative, it's I all guess. Relative. But to me, that's not a long drive. But you know, people w would like to have the option to just drive somewhere five minutes you know, and, and be at their son's or daughter's soccer practice. So um, active recreation. Which it sounds like is happens at Lions Park, but that's really the only facility in College Place where that's possible, right? For like soccer and Kiwanis. a little bit at Kiwanis with, okay. Um, the third, or I guess now we're actually on the fourth and, thing. And just Jen, just so we can mm -hmm. get a clear understanding, this, the youth sports programs that Wall provides, they organize those teams based on schools. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a, got several teams from Davis and the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, they would practice and play some of their games at Davis. At Davis, yeah. You may have to travel to Blue Ridge, which are on the other side of the line, mm -hmm. um, for a game now and then. But the whole the whole theory is in that how it's organized and administered, administered is keep kids by school keep them at their school so we're mm -hmm. not having mom and dad running all over after that. Mm -hmm. Of course, the older they get, that may change. Obviously, in high school it changes, middle school it changes, but in elementary school it stays the same, mm -hmm. uh, except for baseball. Okay. I don't think baseball uses any mm -hmm. uh, college place facilities. Okay, so. thank you. That's, that's how it works in Spokane, too, so that's familiar with that model that makes sense um, picnic tables was the fourth thing that people were really asking for so people are wanting 
active recreation, and they're wanting a place to do kind of some passive things and just be social and get together with their with their families. Splash pad came up. This came up a lot in comments too, and I'm curious: Does Walla Walla have a splash pad? Yes. Yes. Because okay. in in you know we talked about RCO wants to see demand and need. So if there's thought about putting splash pad as a project proposal to RCO, we're going to have to show that there's demand and need for it in College Place, um, even though there's one in Walla Walla. So. I think I think that could be done, yeah. but that's just something to yeah. to consider. Yeah, it can be done because it's a it's a non-supervised activity, yeah. which is good. It doesn't cost the city, but the initial construction cost is significant. Yeah, and one splash pad. And we have temperatures that warrant. Yeah. Splash pad. Yeah. yeah. Five months out of the year. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think a splash pad can accommodate that many kiddos. So it's not like you can say, well, there's one in Walla Walla, so we don't need one here. I need yeah. 25 kids in your, your max, right? So, um, but that's just something to think about in terms of need. Um, shade cover was the sixth highest range item. And lastly, I'm just kind of rounding it out around 29%, we have fire land for future park development. So, I'm just gonna write these down, shade and new parkland. So for the most part, what we've already discussed, this one, I know splash beds come up, parkland's come up, need for this has come up. The new things that the public's kind of pointing out, at least in my mind, that I haven't heard us talk about, restrooms, shades, picnic. Um, so these are all things to be thinking about as we developed ideas for prioritizing projects and improving existing facilities. You know, we just talked about improving restrooms at Lions Park. That seems to be in alignment with, with what people are wanting. Um, okay, question seven. Do you use College Place school district facilities for recreation? Almost 60% said no. 37% said yes. Um, two of the comments were, I didn't know I could. And someone else said they use the, the Rogers Adventist School and the Walla Walla University facilities for recreation. But this goes back to one of the goals I know we've drafted is working in collaboration more with the school district and really developing those um, shared use agreements. And then you can promote this because I, I got the feeling from people saying, oh, I didn't know I could, that if they knew they could, maybe they would be doing it. So um, because there's so many great facilities at the school district, um, level. That's that's a great way to promote recreation in your community. And if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to stop me as we're cruising through this. Um, question eight: Would you use a school gymnasium or outdoor school sports facility or grounds on a regular basis if it were available after school operating hours? Um, for the school gymnasium, this was broken out. They could answer for the school gymnasium or outdoor facilities. School gymnasium, 56% said no, but 67% um, said yes to the outdoor grounds. So again, I think this is in support of one of our draft goals to really develop that shared use agreement with the school district and promote the outdoor recreation facilities um, that the schools offer. Um, one comment that I saw several times was about you know over um, breaks when kiddos aren't in school there's nowhere to take your kids um, so there was some some um, interest in using school facilities on during the breaks when school's out and that that land is available not being utilized by kiddos that they would like to know that that's something they can utilize um, this only came up once throughout the whole survey and I was kind of surprised about that but um, Comment number five says elderly people aren't able to take advantage of the available facilities. And this made me think of a potential goal. You know, most of your parks have playground equipment, like Harvest Meadows is clearly great for young kiddos. Lions Park has the pond and some, you know, walking, but Kiwanis Park seems pretty geared towards young kiddos. The, the pickleball is 
a little older, but um, there's really not necessarily adult active recreation or more passive walking trails and that kind of thing that maybe the demographic you know, of, of the older generation would um, appreciate. So I don't know if you guys think there's some potential in a project or a goal along those lines in making sure the parks are accessible and available to all user groups, all Some age groups. Services. Yeah. Well, I think so it's, we can identify the elderly because they will identify, they'll self-identify. Mm. But we also have to remember that a lot of our elderly in their 70s and 80s are more active than some people are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. It's almost more yeah. the, the, the less active ADA, physical restrictions, uh, maybe more so than the elderly, I guess, at times. Yeah, and there's the, the idea of improving the ADA access around Lions Park, making sure that there's a, a spot where ADA can stop to enjoy the view and, and fish and whatever, you know. Sitting <laughs> benches. <coughs> Up for one walking trails. People walks. Ask for those. You know, Lions Park is probably big enough that you could do a pathway that around the you know it starts at the parking lot and goes around the pond and then around towards Might the street. Get a quarter mile. Yeah. It's like yeah. And if you mark those as, you know, how far you're walking exactly. and stuff, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy to follow. Yes, that was 77%, yes. Some ideas, city-sponsored yoga at the park. Kids' activities would be great. After-school programs for youth that can't afford much. Um, someone said, not that the city should offer it, but if they have a club that wants to expand, maybe the city could help offer assistance. And then there was a lot of support in the comments to team up with Walla Walla. So that's in alignment with something that we've talked about in a goal already. So I think you can feel pretty confident in pursuing that. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of interest and support for that idea. Someone said, you know, we should focus on a library first. And again, you know, someone said, work through the city of Walla Walla rec program. Don't create your own. So. I'm not going to jot that one down because I know we have a draft goal already for um, establishing and pursuing that partnership with Walla Walla. Question 10, do you feel safe in College Place parks? 87% yes. Um, yeah, which, which is really wonderful. That's what you want to see, of course. The folks who said you know, that they didn't feel safe, the primary reason was due to lighting. So. Um, I thought we would write that down as a potential thing to look at for um, when you're looking at conditions and maintenance and improvements to existing facilities. Lighting. Somebody said too much crime in College Place? <laughs> Where are they getting that information? I, yeah. Lighting, lighting's one of those issues that is uh, argued all the time mm -hmm. in the profession. And that is if you light something, people at night can go to it and create problems. If it's not lighted in the middle of a park, they won't go. So from an overall vandalism um, and actually probably safety, hmm. tend not to light stuff um, inside the park because People will go there and then are at risk or go vandalize. So that's hmm. the cops will tell you something totally different, and that's because they want to, they have to be able to drive by 
and, and see. see if anything's going right. Yeah. So yeah. they have a whole different uh, yeah. perspective on it. So I'll just throw that out. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's a, a great project for lighting, but it could be. I also think it reflects how the community views College Place as a relatively safe community. Okay. So whether they're thinking about public facilities or private, how they sense the community, I think it reflects in that answer. Mm -hmm. That's more reflective of the community market than yeah. four parks, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really positive yeah. statement by the community. Definitely, definitely. They feel safe here. When I read some of the comments specific to lighting, what folks seemed to be asking for was along the, the sidewalks and paths leading to the parks as well, so that well, if they wanted to walk to the street. park, yeah, street, so street. that might be yeah. something to well, look at in terms of inventories, what's the lighting like around, you know, the, the entrance to the park. Um, I, I think that problem may end up solving itself though, because at the last council meeting, the council signed that Relight Washington grant, and those dimmer uh, sodium lights are going to be replaced with LED lights, and the state's paying for it, and it's more concentrated. So I think that may solve itself. Okay, and that'll be in the parks and, and be on the pre street lights? Yeah, pretty much everywhere where okay. there's a wooden pole with a light on it, those will be switched out. Um, out of, you know, the 15 responses, at least one, two, three, four, five folks said, we need a park on the west side of town. Um, so one person put it this way, they want a showcase park. <laughs> and I know, um, I know we've talked about that, oh that, that there's need for a bigger facility that has, you know, a more, an exciting feature that's going to draw people in. It's going to, you know, people are, seem to be going to Walla Walla for the parks, but if College Place had a showcase park. Um, so, um, um, let's write that. Park on the west side of town. I mean, I think a big opportunity for that's the McKiernan uh, Christensen development because mm -hmm. they're going to have to either donate land or build the park on the house. That's an opportunity to do a bigger park and do a similar like sports box like what sure. Wall Wall has on the east side. Mm -hmm. And what's the what's the timeline for that well, that development? I, I, w I would expect that they're getting the financing together now. I would expect them to be trying to run through our processes later this year, and then my guess construction would start next year. Oh, okay, okay. But, but uh, that thing is big enough where it's probably going to end up being like five phases and probably take 10 to 12 years to fully build that thing out because that's giant. Okay, but that is addressing this yes. concern and this need. Yeah. Um, and that's right along with one of these, one of the comments here, and I'm going to read it because I saw this comment on several of the questions, but it says, I'm concerned that new development is not being required to set aside property for recreation, a safe place for kids to run around. Um, at the very least, the floodwater collection area should be made large enough or developed in a way that they can be used for recreation. And then I, I saw this comment later, too, related to that new development that's out by the... Uh, the airport um, yeah and I know that's come up that they're they're supposed to be building a park but engineering with the way the the landscape is there's yeah. created a little bit of a problem but there seems to be that expectation um, and that anticipation for for that recreational need in that neighborhood again somebody said we need one really big park so that's kind of an alignment with the showcase park Okay, question 12, are College Place Parks meeting your recreational needs? 52% said yes, 31% said no. Um, some of the comments, again, need another park on the west side of the city. It would be nice to have protected bike lanes. Um, I wish we had more safe spaces for the kiddos to ride bikes with like a safe bike path. So again, that desire for um, you know, a separated path or a bike lane. Um, need better walking paths along the creeks. 
access paths to Fort Walla Walla and the university and the high school campuses. So we talked about that at the last meeting, an idea for you know, connecting the parks and the, the, the grounds and the schools and the university and trying to, to provide some, some connection through a trail network. Um, and and it's some, some person said, you know, I just don't think of College Place for my recreational needs. There's just not programs here to draw me. So, but they love the Christmas parade. Hmm. A lot of positive comments about the fireworks and Christmas parade, just so you know. <laughs> um, the city should see if they can cooperate with the university to offer certain things to the public, like tennis court, baseball fields, maybe even the gym or racquetball in the summer when the college is not really utilizing them. So again, that, just that talk about cooperating with the schools. <clears throat> Question 13, would you be willing to pay a reservation fee to use park facilities? This was, we were about half and half here. 45% said yes, 54% said no. Um, but when you read through the comments, really what people are saying is they don't want to be charged to use the park, but they would be willing to pay a small fee to reserve a shelter. So. And that's kind of what you'd expect to, to see. Everything's open on a first come, first serve basis, unless it's reserved. Yeah, yeah. And as far as I understand, there's not like an official way to reserve the shelter at Lions Park. It's just first come, first serve. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We get questioned about that all, all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. the, the really big comment, the number one comment here, is someone saying essentially that it was their child's birthday, they wanted to use that shelter. When they got to the park, somebody had already put balloons, and and so they ended up just setting up like under some trees. And any time they came back, you know, their their kids' party was later in the day. That shelter still had the balloons. Those people evidently put the balloons on the shelter in the morning, and their party wasn't until the night. So that shelter was reserved all day, even that, though they didn't need it. That's so. wrong perception. Yeah, at least that yeah. I mean, that was this, this one person's take on it, but. Um, that may be something to consider. So I think this is really a positive. You know, it, it welcomes people to say, no, I don't want to pay anything anytime. But the response was, you know, it's mixed and mm -hmm. what I want, I'm going to pay for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a real positive response. Mm -hmm. Be consistent for a long time. What kinds of new parks should College Place develop? Number one thing was non-motorized trails. Second thing was multi-use parks. Third was neighborhood parks, which we identified as two plus acres. And then the, the, the fourth um, most popular item was community parks, which are those big 20 plus acre parks. That's surprising. It, it was surprising me a little bit that the, the large community park ranked fourth when we heard so many responses earlier about this big showcase park. Well, and also, uh, nobody knows where our neighbor neighborhood parks are. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but if they want them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess that goes back to the idea of, you know, convenience, um, having something close to your home. So that supports some of your goals. One of the comments was, we desperately need proper athletic fields. Um, and this is when I giggled a little bit. It's a shame that I have to drive our kids over 20 minutes to Mill Creek Sports Sportsplex. You know, um, a lot of people would think that's a great drive, but you know, people they they want to they want to see that here in this community, the athletic fields. Question 15, please include any additional information to help the city improve their parks and rec needs. You guys are welcome to read through all of those. I highlighted a few um, that I thought might lend itself to a goal or policy or project. Um, the sixth comment was shade options at Kiwanis Park. I'm not familiar enough off the top of my head with the improvements that you guys just put in. There's a small um, gazebo mm -hmm. that we have there. Mm -hmm. That's it. So. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Maybe a larger pavilion there would be more beneficial, or another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. You probably had to plant new trees, so they're still little. Yep. Yeah. Um, the 11th comment, um, as someone with children, sports practices are in Walla Walla rather than here. Not enough to do with kids. Need a crosswalk near Regency to cross Myra. 14th comment, um, again, that park west of College Avenue. The comment number 21, provide a map or brochure about each of the parks, where they are located, and what they have to offer. Does the city have anything like that right now? No. No? Okay. That would be a relatively easy thing to do. And if, if one of the goals is to um, promote some of those parks that are pretty much unknown, um, primarily Harvest Meadows, since Veterans Park is maybe we're still wondering what we want to do with that. Um, providing some type of brochure or map for visitors or making that available on the website or on your Facebook, that seems to be where most people yeah. go. Um, that could be helpful. Okay, and we're almost out of time. We have a good selection of small parks. We need walking paths and facilities that can be used when the weather is too cold or too hot to do anything outside and when the kids are on breaks from school. Someone said maintenance and upkeep is paramount. Again, that call for um, cleaning up the pond at Lions Park. Quality is better than quantity always, was their comment. Splash pad, that came up twice. Um, better lighting and um, enforce leash laws, install um, bags for you know pets when they're on the walks. I don't know if you guys have that now. I think that's at Harvest mm -hmm. Meadows. You have one of those bag dispensers, don't you? I don't know. I, I've seen one at Harvest I Meadows, think Harvest but Meadows. No, we don't yeah. have them anywhere else. I know the big be... parks don't have. <laughs> yeah, that's a small, that's yeah. a small, small goal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you know a fairly a fairly yeah. easy, no, low pressure, cost. Just so you know. Yeah, <laughs> for a very but it is, of reasons. It is worth it. <laughs> So that rounds up the survey. Um, any other general things that you guys pulled out of it that you want me to capture in our notes or that you want me to be aware of? Or I, I think it's got great content. I'm really am proud of what you did. Two things that spoke to me the most. One was okay. College Place are looking for programmable mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm whether that's programmable on a trail or programmable in a soccer league. Um, that seems to be a need. And then the other one that I don't know how to put my finger on it, uh, I don't want to use the word iconic or showcase, but it's almost like College Place is now at the point where it wants to have a readily identifiable image. Yeah. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have that in its mind. Mm -hmm. But it's seeking that. I think the response mm -hmm. on the Christmas parade was a mm -hmm. good example where they like having an identity where that's yeah. that's welcomed and embraced. So mm -hmm. those are the two things that really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that sense too from reading the comments that you know they they want a they want a large park, a showcase park, something that makes College Place unique. Um, that identity that stands out. Yeah. yeah. Any other general themes or comments or? Questions? Okay. Well, um, I had a feeling this would happen, and we're out of time, so I'm, I'm going to stop. But um, next time we come down, <laughs> we will use this information. I'll take these notes and um, plug them into maybe some draft goals policies. And when I come back next month, um, we'll work on the, the goals and policies as a group and really just start going through and crossing things out that have been done amending language based on this feedback um, and that will be our, our next step in our six things. So we'll be working on, on this one when I come back. This is basically done. The um, open house will have happened by the time I come back because that's February 15th so I'll have feedback to provide you based on what the community says related to this. And I thought just, you know, just kind of speaking out loud here real quick. Um, 
for the open house, some of the things that came up as themes from the survey, I thought we could use the open house as an opportunity to really affirm that that's what the community wants, so we can feel really confident in, in some of these things before we put them in as an official goal. Yeah, um, please. We'll go over that. Yeah, please come to the open house. Get your families, friends to come to it. There is another survey that will be going out, um, Survey Monkey, and it's available in Spanish as well. So you, it's the same link. You just select the language you want to do it in. Mm -hmm. and, so. and that's for the full comprehensive yeah. plan. So it's going to have stuff on land use and transportation and utilities. It has a couple of questions about parks. Um, not much because we dealt with that here, but just in case. People were going to respond to that, and they didn't do this one. We'll get a little bit more information about the parks from that survey. So that's all I have. Thank you guys so much for your your feedback and your comments and walking through this with me. Thank you, Jim. Nice job. Yeah. Nice job. This one's like, it's not it's not in Spanish, right? Right. So. Yeah, we didn't um, think about no. that else soon enough. No, nope, that's all I have. I, uh, I attended the, maybe get this sent out to all the members. This is the, uh, the final sheet for the regional trails plan mm. with cost estimates, projects, mm. and then a description. It's a real short, and it was a, it was a nice meeting yeah. on Wednesday night. Uh, it, it was Monday. Monday night. Yeah. Monday night. Yeah. Right, came back from yeah. Um, it's a, the plan is a hundred million dollars. So it's um, there's um, easier opportunities and harder opportunities. So um, if I get these, yes. send that out to everybody so you all have it. Yep. If you haven't seen a copy of the, the maps and the plan that. that has been done. It's very impressive. Yeah. The the entire plan is on on the website. Um, um, community council's website. Yeah. yeah, they have blue zone trails. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't yeah. release it until that evening. That right? They kind of wanted it to be a big. Mm. So it it is out there. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting too. Yeah. That'd be a great thing for us to all look at because I know one of the draft goals right now is to kind of formally uh, adopt that plan mm -hmm. and, and support that plan as part of the college place you know, bicycle and not, you know, pedestrian. The plan was to get that on the agenda of the next meeting in February oh. and then yeah. Okay. Yeah. pretty much adopt With it. The, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to have a recommendation from the Parks Board to the Council to I believe that, that should happen, yes. Sounds good. Yep. When, and when is the next meeting? Uh, I know usually we go over that at the end. I want to make sure 